Among the 16 different oscillators that we have available in Falcon 2, we do have a wavetable oscillator. So in this video, we're going to take a look at all of the parameters and cover those in depth to help you achieve the sound that you'd like to create if you want to work with uh, wavetable synthesis. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Now we can come over to the oscillator browser by clicking here. I'll click on that. And then we want to come to the synthesis. And then down at the very bottom, you can see that we have wavetable. So I'll just click, hold and drag that. I'm going to put this towards the top of the mapping editor to spread that across the entirety of the keyboard range. So we now have our wavetable oscillator loaded. And by default, this is going to have a simple single cycle sign. Now, by clicking on this down arrow, we can access different wavetables. Single cycle are up at the above. Then we have multi down at the bottom. And Falcon actually comes with over 500 different wavetables. You can also lo load your own wavetables in here as well. Uh, and also images. So let's actually take a quick look at that for a second. So I'll come to the Explorer. On You can use the Finder on the Mac. You can also browse to the location that you have your wavetable stored using the, the browser here and go to your places. So I have sounds and samples. So anywhere that you have your wavetables loaded, you can do this within Falcon as well. But we're just going to use the Explorer here and I'm going to double click on the images folder. And I found that simple images work better, a bit better. So images that maybe have simple patterns like this one. So we can then click, hold, and drag that onto the waveform display there. Let's minimize this window. And I'm going to assign the wave index. The wave index will allow us to move through the different waveforms within this image that we loaded. So in order to assign controls on your external controller, you just simply right click on the parameter and then choose MIDI Learn. I'll then turn a knob on my controller and that's been added, and you can see that I'm sweeping through this image that I loaded. So let's play that back. Okay, now let's listen to the other one here. Dragging on top, it will replace the other one. Okay, and of course, you could always assign modulation to the wave index. You don't have to turn this manually. And we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. Now let's give a listen to a third party wavetable or another one here, just to see how you can load this in pretty easily. Uh, let's bring this in, minimize the explorer. Okay, so you can see it's very easy to work with images or other wavetables that you may have. And let's actually spend about 300 seconds and just make a quick patch with this wavetable that I've loaded. And then we'll move on to cover all of the parameters in detail. So maybe, let's see, let's take the voices up to, say, four, our unison voices. We can raise that up. Let's put some detuning on and change the mode to stereo. Add a bit of stereo spread, wave spread, and let's enable our FM module. And let's listen back to this. And let's go ahead and add some modulation to our wave index. So we can do that by right clicking and then coming to add modulation. I'll put this on the layer level and new LFO. Let's go ahead and hide our mapping editor because we don't need that anymore. And if my Falcon looks a little bit different than yours, just know that we can hide the various sections by using these icons up above. So I've hidden the program section and I've also hidden the key group section. So if you're just gonna work with the wavetable oscillator, and using effects with that, there's no need to see all of the different sections. So any section that you'd like, 
you can hide it up above here. So it doesn't have to be so complex in the edit view if you don't need it to be. But let's add back our modulation section, our key group section, which I minimized. And then we want our layer section and oscillator section. Okay, so we just added an LFO to the wave index. So now when I play back, let's take the frequency down a little bit and turn the bipolar off. Let's put a couple of effects on here, maybe an analog filter. Let's take the cut up, cut off a little bit higher. Some drive, analog crunch. I'll just choose crunchy, maybe some delay. And some reverb. I'll put the spark verb on here, maybe a plate. And to finish off, let's add a maximizer. And let's come to the analog crunch and take this down just a little bit so we won't blow our eardrums out. Let's listen back. Okay, so pretty quickly we've got the beginnings of a little preset there. Let's go ahead and close out these effects for now. And actually, maybe I'll leave these and just power them off. Close out that effects section. And I'm gonna power off our LFO as well for now. And let's come back to the wavetable menu here with this down arrow that we mentioned earlier. So by clicking on this, we can access the single cycle waveforms up above. You have different types that are grouped together that you can easily see here, acoustic, additive, digital, parabolic, pulse, and so on. Then down below we have multis that range from analog and bass, brutal, all the way to math. I don't know what this is, Mo, Ocean Swift. So there's a ton here that you can play around with and tweak until your heart is content. But let's go ahead and choose, let's come back to a single cycle for the moment, just to start off with some of these parameters here. And uh, we've already seen the wave index and this applies to the multis, but with the single cycle, we can see the start phase here. This is going to adjust the start uh, of playback for our single cycle waveform. So as I, move this to the right, we can see the playback of that waveform is gonna be changed where that starts. And I'm gonna hold Alt and click to take these settings in the unison back. Let's change the mode back to mono, turn off our FM section, and let's play this back. So below our waveform display here, we have phase distortion and we can add that by using the amount. So this is gonna add harmonics to our waveform. And you have a bunch of different modes that you can choose from. Let's try the formant. And the amount parameter here could be something that would be good to add 
modulation to. So let's actually take a look at that really quickly. We'll put that on the layer level, new LFO. Let's play that back. Change, take the... We can adjust the depth. Okay, I'm gonna remove that LFO from the amount parameter. Let's take that back down and let's move on to a multi. Let's take a look at something from the Ocean Swift. And let's also come to the LFO section and turn that LFO back on. That's gonna modulate our wave index. Okay, and now over to the life left, we have an FM section. And once we enable this, this is going to activate a sine wave that will modulate our wavetable here. Now to really understand how this works, I'm gonna switch this to Hertz. And when we do that, it's gonna set an absolute value for that sine wave to modulate our wavetable here. So then when I play back, let's actually work with a, uh, single cycle sign here to make it a bit more obvious. And I'm gonna take the frequency all the way down. So now at this point, we have no modulation to our sign. But as I increase the frequency, can hear how that's modulating our sign and so like like I said this is going to be absolute so no matter what pitch or pad or key you press on your external controller it's always going to modulate at that 7 Hertz rate now when we deactivate this we have these other modes that we can make use of here so if we have harmonic then it's going to the cycle is going to be based on the pitch that you're playing and you're going to have a harmonic quality to your sound no matter what you're playing back. And for this, you can hear that's behaving a lot differently. And let's come back to a different wavetable. Maybe something. Okay, this one here. Let's take that off. Then re enable. So, no matter what pitch or key you, you're playing, it's it, the modulation here should work with that particular pitch when you're in harmonic. Now, if we were to come to free, It's not always going to work. And you can see here that this is adjusting in semitones. We can also choose chromatic. We've got octaves. octave and fifth. Okay, and these you can just experiment with to find what you're looking for. Your ears are going to be the best judge. And just remember that you have a depth control. Let's choose another wavetable. 
so you can make use of the depth. Let's come back to the harmonic. Now over to the right, we have unison, so we could add more voices, and we saw that really quickly in the very beginning. Let's take this up to six, and we have a mode, so by default this is gonna be in mono, but if we change that to stereo, then the voices can be spread throughout the stereo field. So let's leave this on mono and listen to the six voices first. Now let's switch to stereo and the stereo spread will be activated and by default that's on 10, but we can adjust that and move it up. We have wave spread and this is going to spread out the individual wave cycles in our table across the stereo field. Uh, we may have to come back to that with a different wave table to make it a bit more obvious, but we'll come back to that. But you can hear that a bit. And there's several different modes for the uh, phase spread. You've got uniform, exponential, and random. Then we've got detuning. and a couple of different modes for the detuning. Let's try out the large. Now we saw the phase distortion earlier and so we could also make use of that with this wavetable. Now we also have a smoothing here, and this, when you activate index, this is going to smooth the transition between the different waves in your table. And uh, the octaves, when you activate this, that's gonna smooth out the higher frequencies in those individual uh, waves in your table as they tr transition from one to the other. So let's find a different wave table to experiment with these so you can get a good idea of how that works. So let's come to the instable and let's take our voices back down. I'll hold alt and click to take these back to the defaults just so we can hear how this clearly works. Let's also take our phase distortion back to the default as well. I'm going to power off the LFO. So now I'm gonna use the knob that I assigned to the wave index on my external controller and let's turn off the index under smoothing and hear how this behaves when we have the index turned off. Okay, so you can hear how that's kind of snapping or jumping to the individual waveforms in that table. Now, once we reactivate the index in our playback,
Okay, so you can hear clearly how that's smoothing out those transitions. Now again, the octaves is going to work with the higher frequencies to smooth those out between the waveforms in your table. This one, you may not hear it that much, but let's go ahead and activate that. Okay, now that covers most of the, or all of the parameters within our wavetable module here. But just a couple other things that you may find useful when you're working with this oscillator is uh, we've seen that we can right click and we can add modulation. We can uh, come to the layer level and add AHD. We can add envelopes, LFO. We can even add a step envelope. If we come to the external, we can add MIDI CC, voice, or other. But another cool thing about Falcon is that we can come to our modulation tab in the browser. And here we can see that we have LFO, multi-envelope, and so on. And we can choose presets here. So if you wanted to add a multi-envelope to, say, the wave index, then we can, let's actually turn this, that's okay, that is off. So we could come to one of the presets here. You can see that these are grouped together, basics, cups, curves, etc. Let's try out a pulse, expand out that folder. You can see there's a ton to choose from here. So we could simply click on one, drag that to our wave index, and then this has been added in our modulation section. So if I click on that, we can see this preset that's been loaded. So let's hear how that sounds on our wave index. We could adjust the speed. We could add smoothing. Let's try out another one. Just simple drag and drop. And let's remove the first one that we brought in. Okay, and let's try out an LFO preset. We've got randomizer. Let's give that a listen. A simple drag and drop. We'll re remove our multi envelope. So we can see this is the random setting here. Let's play this back. Take the frequency down. Smooth it. And then once you have this loaded, you could also choose from any of the settings in the menu here. So if we want to choose a tr triangle, we could quickly access that. Let's bring some delay back on this.
Now, if we wanted to add maybe a little bit of low end to this, we could come back to our oscillator browser tab within the browser. And then let's come to the analog. And I'm just going to click hold and drag that. And that's going to be placed on the same key group. This is not going to give us as much flexibility as if we were to create another layer. But I just wanted to show that you can add some low end. And let's actually remove that and add it to a separate layer so that we could take the pitch of that down. So I'm going to click on the tree view and then I'll actually just select the layer one, which we're working in and add a separate key group. So when we expand that out, we can see that we have a key group one, which has our wavetable oscillator. Then we have our key group two, which has, when you add it, it's going to place an analog oscillator on there by default. So. Okay, so this is how you can go about adding a bit more depth to a wavetable oscillator if you're working with that. Now, in practice, it would be better to add this analog oscillator to a separate layer because on our um, layer one here, we have the effects that we have applied to the wavetable and that has a delay an analog crunch and analog filter. So you may not want those to be applied to that sine wave that we added in our key group two. So this, these two key groups are contained within our layer one and you can see the effects here. So as they move towards the top, they will be processed by these effects. So if, you, if we were to have created a second layer, then that layer would not have these effects on them and then the sign would just be a clean sign. Now the way that you could add a layer in the tree view, we could come to the uh, program and then choose add layer. And then now we can see we have a layer two that hasn't had have doesn't have anything added to it yet, but this probably would have been a better place to add our analog oscillator to. And as I said, it would then not have these effects applied to it that are being applied to our wavetable. Okay, so this has been a look at the wavetable oscillator within Falcon. I hope that you have found some useful tips and that this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.